Hello, hello, more dimmers here and welcome to one more game from Tata Steel Chess Tournament 2020 in Vegan Z. And uh, today, day off, so uh, I decided to show you the game from yesterday. And this is one of the most interesting games so far in this tournament. So we have Fabiano Caruana and his ranking is 2822 and he plays as white. And more about Fabiano, I talk about him uh, in the previous video. Uh, where he faced Daniel Dubov and he won in the, some nice style. Uh, he managed to break the fortress of Daniel Dubov. Very interesting game. So feel free to watch and uh, after this game, watch the game uh, with Daniel Dubov. Very interesting uh, and uh, can learn a lot from that game. And as his opponent, uh, Vishwanathan Anand, uh, he is from India. And his ranking is 2758. And Vishwanathan Anand was the world champion for a couple of years. And uh, he is 50 years old, very experienced player. And he was, of course, in the 2800 very exclusive club of players. So uh, two very, very strong players. And one interesting fact, I mentioned that before, but Vishwanathan Anand, his first tournament in Vegas Z won in 1989. And at that time, none of the players, the rest of the players uh, playing in this tournament 2020 born yet, except Nikita Vityugov. But he was the replacement uh, for Jan Nepomnishi. And uh, if, if, he, if he was not replacement, then that would be, this statement would be true. So let's see what happened on the board. We have d4 by Caruana, knight f6, answer by Anand, and now we have c4, e6, knight f3, d5, queen's gambit declined on the board. Knight c3, and bishop e7 is the, the most popular move, but now we have bishop c4 by Anand, and it's a Ragozin defense. C takes on d5, e takes on d5, and bishop on f4. Usually the most popular line here would be bishop g5, but uh, bishop f4 was played by Caruana. So um, this bishop is... Um, watching c7 uh, pawn and asking him hey maybe you're gonna move and you know uh, take care of your friend on d5 we have a uh, castle by anand e3 and here bishop f5 in similar fashion queen b3 attacking the bishop and here is the important uh, moment of the game uh, bishop c3 with check uh, can be played, but knight c3 is the interesting idea. Uh, because now this pawn on c7 uh, stay behind, so uh, can support the uh, central pawn. Uh, so we have bishop on g5, Caruana jump in immediately. And now a5 is the novelty in this game uh, by Anand, and Anand actually sacrificed the pawn because uh, now bishop takes on f6, queen takes on f6, and this pawn actually doesn't have an, any defender. So is it possible to take that pawn? This is the question. So Caruana knows, of course, that uh, Anand prepares very well for every tournament, and he has great team of the grandmaster who helped him to prepare the, the novelties. So he was very careful, but watch what would happen. For example, if he decide to take on uh, d5, what bad things could happen? Um, first thing we have to know what are the weak points of the of the white position. First of all, uh, the king is not castle yet, so it's not safe yet. So for example, rook on f on d8, queen go back to c4, and now another sacrifice on b5. And, and here the, the queen would have to take on b5. And now we would have bang, knight on d4. So this is sacrifice of, of the knight, a uh, very dynamic uh, preparation. So for example, now it, if knight takes on d4, we would have c5 kicking that knight. Knight goes on e2, uh, defending the knight on c3 because now it's uh, attacked twice. 
and uh, that would be actually a fork very unpleasant fork with uh, taking the rook so uh, this is why knight on e2 was played but now queen d6 would be played and uh, checkmate idea is on the board so f3 uh, queen d2 anyway uh, king f2 and now queen on b2 so uh, white are in quite serious uh, troubles now the rook is under attack so rook has to move to c1 bishop on d3 bringing more attackers to the party and also attacking the queen at the same time queen has to move to the less fav favorable position and now for example c4 and now yes white has extra piece but uh, who would like to play against Anand where he developed most of the pieces and the rook can be developed anytime and white didn't manage to castle and didn't manage to develop um, the pieces this uh, knight is uh, pinned so it's also unuseful at this moment very dangerous situation so black would have a lot of initiative but also after this move e could take on d4 it's slightly better but still c5 bishop e2 so running very fast to the to the castle c takes on um, d4 knight takes on d4 rook takes on d4 so giving back the material and now a castle same story just um, white don't have the extra uh, minor piece so uh, it's slightly better because king is uh, much safer but but still uh, all the initiative is uh, in the hands of um, Vishwanathan Anand so that's not the way to take that pawn right away uh, so Caruana taught for a while and he played a3 a3 attacking the bishop and uh, forcing bishop to do something so bishop would have to move but if it moves somewhere then uh, white would get a very important tempo and uh, could castle very easily so first a4 by Anand so forcing the queen to do something and queen can go of course to a2 or on d1 but Caruana decided to take on d5 and now position is slightly better similar idea with rook f on d8 queen c4 b5 queen b5 knight d4 uh, that doesn't work uh, the same way because we would have e takes on d4 and now this bishop has to take on c3 and after bishop on c3 uh, it's much better for white with one extra piece uh, it's just a uh, winning position so uh, it doesn't work now so this move a3 was um, a pretty good one uh, and here we have bishop takes on c3 first b takes on c3 and now we have knight on a5 uh, preparing to go to b3 it's pretty nice outpost for the knight and uh, it could be a very strong knight on the queen side queen e5 was played by Caruana asking Anand if he want to exchange but of course um, Anand um, is not interested in that so he attacked the c3 pawn with the threat to pick up the rook and we have c4 and yes c4 pawn is attacked twice so it looks like can be taken but keep in mind that the uh, bishop on f5 is hanging now so knight b3 was played by Anand the most active move uh, and here Caruana could go for rook on a2 uh, saving the rook and for example bishop on e4 still keeping the pressure uh, d5 uh, dismantling this uh, battery queen on g6 knight h4 attacking the queen and for example queen on g4 so uh, and attacking the knight so still very complicated position white uh, still didn't manage to castle and black have in initiative so would be quite um, difficult for white to um, to survive uh, however the position is not so bad like would be before uh, but still uh, Caruana decided to give back the exchange so he took this um, bishop on f5 
and Anand took on A1. So he's uh, up the exchange uh, in the cost of the one pawn. We have bishop on d3, so very beautifully uh, developed bishop. Now we have the uh, tempo, important tempo, and uh, h7 pawn is attacked. The threat is, of course, checkmate, g6 uh, by Anand. So he weakened his um, pawn structure and he doesn't have the dark square bishop. So this is always uh, quite difficult to play uh, idea but it's of course choice of Anand so Queen f4 is played and now we have Knight come back to b3 and castle by Caruana so yes now he managed to castle he should be very happy however uh, he's uh, pawn up but exchange down so not really great Queen d6 by Anand so he want to exchange now as he's uh, uh, it's, it's in his favor. Queen on h6, so Caruana don't want to exchange, of course, and also uh, he creates some nasty plan of checkmating on h7. Uh, so Queen f6 was played by Anand. He also could play Queen e7, Queen e7 and f6. f6 is good move because uh, it controls important square in the front of the king. So this knight uh, couldn't actually reach um, these squares and these squares are uh, very crucial for the rest of the game. So maybe f6 would be, would be better. But queen on f6 was played. c5 by, by Caruana and for now Everything is, you know, stabilized, a very beautiful pawn chain by Caruana, the, the position looks good. And now we have b6 by Anand. c takes on b6, c takes on b6, and Anand created two pawns against the one pawn of uh, Caruana on the queen side. Uh, so this is a slight advantage and there is definitely some plan around that to play. And now we have knight on e5. So knight on e5 is possible now and this outpost is, is, is very, very good. Now we have rook f on c8. There is the threat, of course, on forking. Now we have rook f on c8 and f4. So Caruana built some kind of stone wall with the outpost um, knight on e5. A very strong and solid structure to defend and also uh, maybe start to uh, bringing some attacking ideas as well. And here rook c1. So Anand want to exchange as many pieces as possible as he would easily win in the ending. Rook takes on c1, knight takes on c1, and now we have bishop on c4. And bishop on c4, uh, it's pretty strong. First of all, it attacked the f7 pawn. And together with knight, uh, it's uh, quite possible that uh, that can be successful. Uh, and also, this bishop controls some, some squares. Uh, so this knight has not easy... Uh, way of escaping the only way would be a b3 but after exchanging these pawns would just um, got probably hunted by the um, by the queen so at this moment not really great idea to to just leave so rook a7 was played defending bringing bringing the defender to f7 and now we have knight on g4 so from this great outpost Knight g4 is even better against the pawn structure like this. Now this knight can jump on f6, on h6 and create some serious threats, uh, even checkmating threats. We have queen on d6 and here queen on g5. Queen on d6, d6 actually attacking the uh, a3 pawn. Uh, but queen on g5 uh, asking Anand like, hey, are you really sure you want to take this? Because now uh, this, this queen can jump to the d8 and, and create some, some nasty threats. For example, if this queen uh, takes the a3 pawn, queen d8 with check, queen, f queen f8, 
So uh, it, everything looks good, but now we would have queen on b6 taking the pawn, rook a8 because rook is attacked, and now queen f6. So improving position uh, of the queen with all the tempos. Rook a7, so still bringing the defender here because it's uh, pretty dangerous. Look at this. If the bishop can attack on f7 and queen can attack on f7 and then knight can jump uh, on h6 after with the fork, that's uh, really a lot of good tactics there. So not really great. So rook on a7 is a must, but then f5 would be very powerful. And now all this idea uh, gonna materialize, materialize again. And the problem is uh, what black could do. For example, black could sacrifice the knight to get some tempo uh, f uh, check. Uh, if white takes that, uh, then a3 running with that, but then fg6 first, hg6 first, and then bishop goes back to c4 and still threatening the uh, some uh, nasty stuff there. Then a2, so closer to the um, uh, to the promotion square, and then queen g6 check, and uh, the pawn on f7 is pinned. So uh, queen g7 is the the only move. But now we would have knight on h6, and after uh, king on h8, knight on f7, and rook on f7, white simply exchange the queens and can take on b2 and this is easily win win to to for for white as four pawns uh, can do whatever want so uh, it's easy to promote uh, so that's definitely not the way to go so for now this pawn is just untouchable Queen e7 was played, so challenging the queen, and now queen can't uh, stay on this diagonal. Uh, so now black maybe could take on a a3. However, queen b5 by uh, Caruana, and now uh, king on e e8. That is also a similar uh, threat. And now we have king on g7 instead of uh, taking on a3 immediately. But now we have f5, and f5, uh, it's still impossible uh, to take because f5 now, now would create some uh, very nasty f6 move. And also, if any other move would be played now by black, then f6 is a big threat as it forks the queen and the, and, and the king. So f6 to prevent that, and now we have queen on d5 creating this very powerful battery and threatening checkmate uh, on g8. So we have a queen f8 preventing that, f takes on g6, h takes on g6, and now e4. So centralizing the pawns, uh, strengthening the center, and, and here actually a very good move for um, Vishwanathan Anand, um, but he missed this move. Uh, b five with the idea of exchanging the the one pawn for the pawn on a3 and actually b5 dismantle this battery because this bishop can't be moved anywhere here because of the of the knight can can kill it so uh, that's not the option so bishop on b5 would have to take and now queen takes on a3 bishop back to c4 queen back to f8 and now this pawn can march and be very dangerous on a5 so that's the chance which uh, vishwanathan anand missed uh, instead he played queen on c8 and queen on c8 actually attacks the the knight on g4 but also keeping an eye on the important square uh, where white could uh, checkmate um, the, the black king we have h3 so giving the defense for this powerful knight and now we have rook on d7 so uh, attacking the queen but queen e6 uh, queen want to stay in the in this diagonal uh, queen d8 now, uh, and we have e5. e5, so bringing one more attacker to the f6. Uh, 
uh, square. And now we have f5. Anand is not interested in any complications in this case. He play f5. And here is very important part of this game. Uh, it's the move 37 for Caruana and he has less than one minute to make the rest of the moves. But uh, with incrementation, 30 seconds for move, then he would have about two, two, two and a half minutes to, to play all his moves. And uh, the best option he could play would be pr probably knight on f6. And now, for example, uh, there are a couple of options. Uh, rook could go on e7, rook could go on a7, but rook also can take on d4, which is a very dangerous and very sharp line. Queen on f7 would be played, king on h6, knight g8 check, so it looks like very dangerous for black, but then king go on g5, knight e7 preventing the uh, queen of doing anything uh, and here there is a threat of course uh, uh, queen takes on g6 so what to do with that king f4 seems like is the way to go and now king h2 very silent move but very important move would give white the chances of very complicated in very double edge game and uh, but it would be so complicated that maybe Vishwanathan Anand couldn't couldn't calculate all the all the all the lines he's 50 years old he, he doesn't calculate he has a lot of experience but he doesn't calculate uh, so sharp like you know a couple of years ago uh, so maybe that would be mm, the great idea what if king h2 is not played for example a knight on g6 with attack on the king and that actually would be losing for white because king g3 and now black has a uh, mating ideas here queen f5 uh, would bring the queen as a extra defender here rook d1 bishop f1 and now knight e2 check king h1 and now queen d now this is interesting this is the only way for for black to play is queen on d3 in any other variation uh, black would just uh, just lose would got checkmated so queen d3 is the only way and now all these lines are so complicated but uh, this king always can escape uh, through uh, through f2 e1 and d2 squares uh, so this would be probably the best uh, idea for uh, for for white for caruana to play this knight on f6 uh, and then uh, attack attack this way maybe that that would be interesting just king h2 is important because uh, white don't want uh, king on g3 that would be very very dangerous so that would be very exciting line however caruana play queen on f6 and queen on f6 actually actually is a, a big blunder we have queen on f6 and uh, and now e takes on e f6 so creating some pass pawn uh, also this pass pawn is supported so uh, quite dangerous uh, but king h7 was played and here we have knight on e5 knight on e5 and uh, Anand could now easily draw for example rook on d4 and now after f7 rook d8 knight d7 knight is untouchable because of the promotion king would have to go to g7 first and now promotion to the queen rook takes on f8 knight takes on f8 king takes on f8 and bishop b5 attacking the uh, a4 pawn king e7 king f2 and it's uh, is a probably draw uh, with uh, maybe s no that that's the draw i don't think any side would have uh, uh, more chances uh, very drawish position so that was the way to draw but anand play for the win so he play rook on d6 here we have f7 
king g7 so coming to the uh, promotion square knight f3 was played and now we have uh, defending the pawn on d4 and knight on b3 attacking a second time the pawn on d4 so here Caruana cannot defend uh, more so he play knight on g5 much more active and uh, black actually it's very difficult the decision to take on d4 if that happen uh, then knight h7 would be played rook has to go on d8 as the promotion is prepared but promotion anyway and rook has to take on f8 knight takes on f8 king takes on f8 and here black yes has a very nice uh, uh, coverage of this knight uh, the white bishop can't move anywhere and also can't attack this um, this knight so if white for example want to attack a4 weakness then they would have to go um, this way and it takes four move to to go while black just can move the king and control uh, and sorry about that and control the um, d7 square so uh, white don't have many possibilities bishop d3 would have to be played b5 protected and now king f2 b4 a takes on b4 a3 and bishop on c4 very complex situation it looks like um, drawish black maybe would be slightly better but it's a very sharp position actually uh, if white try to approach um, then actually this this knight can uh, fork the king and the uh, and the pawn so not really an option uh, and for now uh, it, there, there is no other way to to approach the the knight maybe somewhere around but it takes too much time so uh, very difficult situation also black cannot push a, a7 and white also can't push because if white push black can just take on b5 and then push uh, the a pawn so that's probably would be too early to take on d4 this is why anand play on d2 so knight d2 we have and bishop on e6 bishop on e6 uh, this move actually gives anand the opportunity to win that game all he had to do it rook takes on e6 giving back the exchange but simplify the the game uh very much for example uh, promotion to the queen otherwise this um, this pawn is lost anyway so king takes on f8 now knight takes on e6 with check king e7 uh, knight on f4 and for example b5 knight g6 preparing to uh, you know advance the the pawn on h file but now we would have a king on d6 and and who is faster actually white one two three four five moves and black one two three four moves with the check so uh, black would be much much faster so that was the way for anand to just uh, win the game but somehow he missed this opportunity and he play rook on d8 we have king on f2 and now we have king f6 king f6 yes this move was discussed um, everywhere as the uh, not really great uh, move by uh, by anand and it's actually do nothing uh, it's bringing the the king closer to uh, e7 uh, but can't actually attack the knight mm. The best move in that position would be probably knight on b3 and then attack the d4 pawn but also interesting line would be knight on e4 forking the knight and the king and um, that's forced to, to exchange and after king e3 rook d6 d5 defending the bishop b5 would be play king e4 uh, first uh, to you know don't leave the pass pawns uh, behind you now we have b4 king d3 this is very interesting line b takes on e3 now king c2 
rook b6, so cutting the king from approaching, and now d6, so sacrificing the pawn. Uh, pawn has to be taken, and now bishop on a2, so everything looks like defended, but now we have rook on b6, and now the threat is to take the uh, bishop because of the check, so king c1, rook b2 anyway, bishop d5 moving and still controlling uh, a2 pawn, and now rook b3, and this is so great move. And it looks very, very fancy. So after taking uh, two connected passed pawns, of course, winning for black. So knight e4 would be really, really interesting and a winning continuation for black. Instead, king f6 was played by Anand. So uh, not really great move, but he's still in the game. We have bishop on d7 really great move by Caruana. Of course, bishop can't be taken. So this is why knight on e4 is played. Uh, with check and fork, of course, like I showed you before, but now it it's everything um, different. Knight e4 with check, f takes on e4, and now we still have bishop on e8. King e7, so uh, protecting um, the promotion square. King e3, and here rook on b8 was played, but interesting idea would be rook on c8 uh, with the threat of taking on a3 with check. So for example, king on e4, king f8 waiting, and once king is on e8 advanced, now rook on c3, and if uh, bishop takes on a4, um, then we would have just simple king, king f7, king d6, rook a3, and bishop b5. And it would be uh, probably easy win for, um, for black as, uh, as black uh, has the rook. And also uh, after rook on c3, if the king d6 is played, and then rook a3 anyway, and now d5, rook a2, so coming for more pawns. And if king on c7, for example, making the way for the pawn, then rook can go to c2 with check. And then king takes on b6, for example, a3, d6, a2, uh, d7, and rook on d2, and just winning for, um, and just winning for uh, black, of course, because this pawn uh, can't promote and uh, black can promote to the queen. So uh, that would be a pretty good, interesting continuation. Maybe rook c8 was the way to go. But we have rook on b8, uh, also awesome idea to, to push the pawn on um, b file. And we have bishop on a4. And of course, king f7 should be played by Anand, but Actually, he didn't play that move. Uh, king e4, that would be the main line. And actually, white has more pawns, uh, so probably some chances, but black still are up the exchange for these two pawns and uh, probably had the chances to, to win that game or at least um, draw. Uh, however, Anand really, really want to win somehow. So after bishop taking on a he didn't go for this pawn on f7. He thought, okay, I can take it later. He play b5. And now we have a uh, bishop on b3. And this bishop actually defending uh, this dangerous pawn. So this king is stuck on e7, can't move anywhere. And uh, now we have rook on a8, attacking the, the pawn, king e4, rook a3, and bishop e6. Uh, and here, of course, uh, bishop can't be taken because of the promotion. Uh, rook a6 could be played by Anand. That's probably uh, the best drawish idea. d5, b4, king d3, rook b6, uh, king c2, uh, pawn on b2, king b2, and that would be that would be probably a draw. But Anand play rook on a1, so trying to attack from the 
from the first rank and now we have d5 consolidating this chain we have rook on d1 so preventing um, uh, this pawn from moving we have king e5 and somehow uh, somehow Anand told like okay this idea is uh, not great anymore I don't want to prevent that so I will play uh, rook on f1 and uh, not, not, not sure what was his plan maybe maybe he want to exchange the this pawn and the, uh, and the bishop for the rook but it's uh, way too late and we have d6 check now king f8 and king d5 Anand tried to play rook f6 uh, so trying to prevent from uh, king from moving to c6 uh, but then d7 was played king e7 so jumping um, inside and taking the space for the for the king to to jump inside but then king c6 and this is so great move this is so great move actually it looks like very illogical move because after rook on e6 with check uh, then black can do whatever they want but actually king on c7 wins the game and now if king on f7 then of course promotion but if uh, rook on d6 it's also not better because now we have promotion on f8 and after taking that queen we have king on d6 and simply winning the game so uh really great stuff I played here with this king c6 so rook f2 by anand trying to get maybe some counterplay but now we have king on b5 uh, king on b5 uh, so uh, caruana don't want to risk anything and we have rook on b2 check king c6 and rook b8 so now anand uh, has the last stand on the eighth rank we have king c7 and in this position actually vishwanathan anand um, ex uh, world champion resigned the game and uh, he resigned the game because uh, for example he has to stay on the eighth rank so rook e8 now we would have for example bishop d5 attacking this rook so rook has to move the best square is of course d8 attacking this d7 uh, pawn and can take it for free uh, but actually very important move king on c6 and now if this is um, taken uh, without the check then uh, pawn can be promoted for example something like this and uh, we have the same situation so very very winning uh, so actually now it can't be taken we would have g5 for example g4 by white so blocking and it looks like uh, black can handle that rook e8 h4 would be played g takes on h4 g5 and now rook d8 so going after this pawn maybe now g6 rook takes on d7 the same thing for example a promotion so um, the same things happen and now black maybe could get to the pawn and draw the game is that possible bishop e4 is everything about the proper calculation h3 king on e6 h2 king f5 and yeah king is just on time so everything would have to be precisely calculated anand definitely did that uh, so this is why in this position he just resigned the game so thanks you very much for watching and this was a very complicated very complex game so i hope you enjoyed that uh, even it, if, if it was uh, quite long uh, but a lot of interesting lines and there are much more lines to show but the game would have to the analysis would have to be like two or three hours so uh really really good stuff here we had and yes if you like this video just push like if you don't like this video push unlike and leave the comment what games you would like to see from this tournament i didn't cover yet i try to cover the top games but i also show some uh, more interesting games which are not uh, commented um, uh, anywhere else so feel free to see the 
the list the the playlist is here you have the link here and uh, yeah feel free to subscribe of course um, and enjoy my content and uh, yeah thanks for watching and see you in the next one